In 1521, Spanish explorers arrived in the islands that comprise the present-day country of the Philippines. Spanish colonization began in 1565, which would eventually extend to over three centuries. But by the 1880s, nationalism had emerged among the native population, which led to the outbreak of an independence war in August 1896. The war ended in a stalemate, and in December 1897, a truce was signed between Spain and the revolutionaries, although heightened tensions and mutual distrust remained. Then in April 1898, war broke out between the United States and Spain. A U.S. fleet was sent to the Philippines, which on May 1, 1898, dealt a crushing defeat of the Spanish Navy of Manila, the colonial capital. With American encouragement, Filipino revolutionaries led by Emilio Aguinaldo restarted their uprising against Spain and quickly gained control of much of the colony that by June 1898 they had surrounded and besieged the Spanish forces in Manila. Sensing imminent victory, on June 12, 1898, Aguinaldo declared the independence of the Philippines. Meanwhile, in late June 1898, U.S. ground forces arrived and were landed south of Manila to start a land campaign against the Spanish forces. However, on August 12, 1898, the United States and Spain signed a peace treaty that ended the war. The treaty also ended Spanish colonial rule in the Philippines. Moreover, the Spanish army allowed American forces to enter and occupy Manila, with Filipino troops relegated to the perimeter of the capital. With Spanish rule ended, tensions quickly escalated between the American and Filipino forces. Then on the night of February 4, 1899, shots were fired between American and Filipino patrols in the outskirts of Manila. Full-scale war then broke out in Manila between the 19,000 American and 15,000 Filipino troops, which quickly turned into a rout as superior American firepower pushed back the Filipinos. On February 22, 1899, Filipino forces counterattacked from north and south of Manila but were thrown back after three days of confused fighting. In February to March 1899, U.S. Navy ships, which controlled the waters, landed troops in key cities in the Visayas. Meanwhile, Aguinaldo and his forces retreated north to their capital, Malolos. In March 1899, American forces expanded their zone of control and advanced outside Manila, which cut off Aguinaldo from other revolutionary strongholds south of Manila. In late March 1899, U.S. forces launched a two-prong offensive into northern Luzon. They quickly overran several towns in Bulacan before capturing Malolos on March 31, 1899, but not before Aguinaldo and his forces moved to San Fernando, Pampanga, starting a pattern of relocating his government's capital to a location just beyond the reach of the pursuing U.S. forces. On May 5, 1899, U.S. forces captured San Fernando, but not before Aguinaldo again slipped away to his new headquarters in San Isidro, Nueva Ecija. By then, with more American troops arriving and Filipino forces severely outgunned, no set peace battles were fought and the war turned into the pursuit of Aguinaldo, who had effectively broken up his forces to wage guerrilla warfare and conduct rearguard actions to stall the American advance. The eastern prong of the U.S. offensive continued into Nueva Ecija and captured San Isidro, with Aguinaldo earlier escaping further north to Bamban, Tarlac. The western prong, which was the main attack force, also advanced through Pampanga and Tarlac, capturing Bamban on November 12, 1899, with Aguinaldo escaping north to Bayambang, Pangasinan. With U.S. forces continuing north through Tarlac and Pangasinan, Aguinaldo barely escaped capture and slipped through a narrow gap between the converging U.S. forces and traversed La Union before reaching Candon, Ilocos Sur on November 22, 1899. There, Aguinaldo turned east into the heavily forested Cordillera Mountains. The Americans, anticipating Aguinaldo's plan, sent a battalion in pursuit which clashed with a blocking force of Filipino riflemen led by General Del Pilar at Tirad Pass. The Americans broke through but the rear guard action allowed Aguinaldo to escape through the mountains and into the relative safety of Palanan in the northeastern coast. 
In 1900, as a result of Aguinaldo's order to break up his army into guerrilla units, fighting broke out all across the islands, including in Samar, Marinduque, and northern Mindanao. The Americans implemented the Spanish system of reconcentrado in conflict areas where villages were depopulated and their residents resettled in guarded camps, thereby preventing contact between the guerrillas and the civilian population. Then on March 23, 1901, U.S. forces captured Aguinaldo, who then pledged his allegiance to the United States. However, the war continued, with the revolutionary leadership taken up by General Miguel Malvar, who operated in Batangas and nearby provinces. The year 1901 saw the most intense phase of the implementation of Reconcentrado in guerrilla-held areas. In January, interior villages in Marinduque were depopulated and their residents moved to coastal guarded camps before the U.S. Army launched inland operations to flush out the guerrillas. Then in April 1901, U.S. forces carried out similar operations in Abra in northern Luzon. Also in April 1901, U.S. forces launched a scorched-earth, 60-mile-wide destruction of villages and farmlands in Panay Island from Iloilo in the south to Capiz in the north. Then in September 1901, Filipino guerrillas attacked an American garrison in Balangiga, Samar, killing nearly all the American soldiers. In reprisal, the U.S. Army carried out a scorched-earth campaign across Samar aimed against the insurgents but which severely affected the local population. Various estimates place the number of civilian casualties at between 2,500 and 50,000. In December 1901, Reconcentrado and a pacification campaign were launched in Batangas, which were so effective that forced General Malvar to surrender in April 1902. This marked the official end of the war. Thereafter, the U.S. government granted amnesty to all Filipinos who had participated in the war. However, many localized fighting would persist until 1910, which were instigated by guerrillas whom the Americans called irreconcilables, which sometimes caused serious security problems that the U.S. Army was forced to reintroduce reconcentrado and suspend civil liberties, attendant to conducting counterinsurgency operations. But these small uprisings ultimately failed for a number of reasons. 1. The absence of a unified leadership. 2. Lack of a common ideology. 3. No international support and recognition. And 4. The U.S. government's effective carrot-and-stick system that enticed revolutionaries to surrender in exchange for some form of benefit or otherwise face the might of the U.S. Army.